Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, we're now on part 7 of this continuing Crusader Kings tutorial which uh, I think should now probably be referred to as a let's play. So uh, without further ado let's get on with it. Last week we successfully conquered Leinster here and uh, this is good for us because it means that we're now well on our way to our goal of creating the Kingdom of Ireland. We only need uh, two more territories to get a total of 50% and then after that it's just a case of scrounging together the money and uh, away we go. We've, uh, we can get the crown, we'll achieve our goal and I'll show you what you can do with that sort of power. So first things first obviously we just need to check up on the situation, re-familiarise ourselves with everything that's going on. Council's all assigned, so we all want to improve diplomatic relations. We have trouble with the succession here. This fella really doesn't like me. That tyranny is causing problems. Um, there's not much we can do about that, so the best we can really do is see how this one develops and see if there's any other situations, anything we can do. His regent isn't too fond of me either, but uh, again, there's not much we can do for now. So hopefully the Chancellor will be able to, to repair some of that damage. Okay, Marshall's researching military tech as we're not looking for war at the moment. That's fine. Uh, the steward's collecting taxes, that's good, but uh, I think for the moment well, I'll go back to researching economy tech. Um, there appears to be some sort of party going on outside, uh, there is fireworks going on anyway, so if you hear any shouts or uh, any bangs it's just uh, fireworks going on outside. People of Surrey seem to love fireworks for some reason, there's scarcely a month that goes by without some sort of display. Uh, Spymaster is scheming. This is a very, very good idea. However, I think the best thing to do would be to send him to scheme in Ormond, seeing as that's where the trouble is likely to lie. And Bishop's researching cultural tech, so that's good as well. Uh, laws. We want to be changing these succession laws, but it's going to be a while before we can do that yet. Rule isn't quite there. Um, not really happy with messing about with the technology too much yet. We'll leave that as is. The military, we're not too worried about the military at the moment, seeing as uh, we can probably fight off any invasion through sheer weight of uh, power at the moment and the size of, of my domain here. Uh, intrigue, no currently active plots, no prisoners, no known plots, no threats. Fantastic, no factions and religion. Uh, we've not got a problem here. My vassal bishops like their pope more than they like me. Except this guy, who's a heretic, so he pays me my he pays me taxes anyway. So uh, we're all good. Uh, two week claims can be pressed, neither of which is really beneficial at the moment, uh, seeing as this guy, his children are of the Jimena dynasty. So title loss on succession is this lot, but that's because of gavel kind. You'll see here I have two siblings. These are currently my um, heirs. So this is my primary heir who will inherit my main titles, but his sibling will also, because of Gavelkind's succession, is entitled to a slice of the pie as well. So one of them will get one of my uh, duchies, Duchy of Munster, the other will get one of my other duchies, the Duchy of Leinster. So that is not fun, because that will essentially split my realm in half. Now if I had the kingship, the primary claimant would get the kingship, secondary claimants would only be able to get duchies, and those duchies would still be loyal to the king. So this is another reason why it's a very good idea to try and have that one title the highest that you can. And bear in mind as well, if you had two crowns, so if you controlled two kingdoms, and you had Gavelkind succession, you will lose one of those crowns. So important considerations there, and it's why you need to pay attention to your succession laws. Hopefully we'll be able to touch on that in this video. For now though, let's just see if there's anything we can do with regards... Yep, we can hold a feast here. I wonder if I can try and bribe this little sod to uh, turn up. I've not got enough money to send a gift, so not much I can do there. I might try revoking his titles, because I should have enough military power from my vassals to do that, but my levies have been up for a while, so it's a bit risky. Okay, no problems with any other of my vassals, just him. Someone of my dynasty has become of legal age and he has become a fortune builder. So let's just pause for a moment. Now, as this person is of my dynasty and male, they are very potent as a means of expanding my realm through claims. 
So, for example, what I could do is um, say there was a female ruler, marry him to the female ruler, a straightforward, not matrilineal marriage. His children would then come in my dynasty. When they die, when the ruler dies, the title passes to her children. Thus, the title passes into my dynasty. Once it's within my dynasty, it's a lot easier to it's a lot easier to get into my realm. Um, and what do you know? Unfortunately, there's a betrothal here already, uh, so that's not going to be too useful. Another one here, so that was Aurel. Nope. So I could try doing that here, but uh, matrilineal betrothals tend to fail quite hard. I've left this one here primarily because, well, you never know. I'm, I'm always clinging to hope, but uh, if it doesn't work out, I can always do something with that later, further down the line. The other thing you can do, of course, is if people have female daughters, if people have female heirs, you can marry your dynasty members into their bloodlines. And a lot of the time, if the daughters are quite high up the line of succession, they can get claims on the titles when those are passed. So if you marry the daughter to a male member of your family, the daughter joins your court. That means that if they then get a claim, as they are a member of your court, you can press that claim for them. And of course, because they've married a member of your dynasty, they're children of your dynasty, so after you've pressed that claim and succeeded, and that person then dies, it passes the realm that you've conquered using that claim, passes into your dynasty. I've been over this before in previous videos, which is why I'm rushing through it a bit, but uh, it's always good to just give that quick refresher. It doesn't look like there's anyone particularly eligible in this realm at the moment, there's uh, no word females of marrying age, so we might have to look a bit further abroad with uh, that particular kinsman. So if you're looking for unmarried kinsmen, the dynasty tree is one way you can do it. Um, you can use the filters here. Only men. Yep, yeah, only landed. No, he wasn't landed. Only alive. So you can see here my married and so on. Malachi, that was him, I think, who'd just come of age. No, nope. he's 37, so he's evidently... Yeah, here we are. Donald. So I can arrange a marriage through here. I won't get an alliance out of these marriages because he's not of my direct bloodline. He's of my dynasty, but he's not of my direct uh, heredity, as it were. He is not of the father-son line. So no alliance is there, but still... He could get the dynasty rooted in other cultures. So let's sort by rank, see if there's any eligible. No, uh, there's no one particularly eligible around here. It's all courtiers. There's a baroness there. No one, not of, it, not of uh, marrying age. We'll go with a betrothal to the uh, Princess of England, possibly. Let's have a quick look at her. Is she particularly high up the... No, she doesn't. She's got some claims. So, and her claims can be inherited by successors. So if I can marry this guy to her, that claim on the Kingdom of England can be inherited by a successor. And I could quite possibly end up controlling who gets put on the throne of England. You see, these two won't be inherited unless, in, unless pressed in war, though. So let's just find that fella again. Go to the character sheet, arrange marriage, till the Princess of England. He'll get a lot of prestige out of that as well, so that's good for him. So that's going to set up that betrothal. Set the feast going. Obviously the guy from Ormond isn't going to come because he uh, he hates my guts, but uh, that's his problem, not mine. Okay, gain some intrigue from the spy master. That's useful. That will actually be quite useful, even if I don't want to... Um, even if this guy doesn't turn up, which he might do actually, um, I can uh, shiv him if needs be. And even if I don't want to shiv him, relative state intrigue also means that arrests will be easier as well. Um, oh, they all turned up. Very nice. Oh, the peasants have revolted. Okay, right. I'll use my own troops to put this down. Well, I'm probably not going to put it down straight away. My levies are still depleted from the war. But I should be able to cause enough damage that... Uh... 
I should be able to cause enough damage they won't be able to lay siege. So you should be familiar with that particular. Okay. So that should help shore up relations with my vassals a bit. See, people are a little less annoyed with me now. Succession laws, no, not ten years yet. Nearly, though, nearly. And there we go, that's broken. Rebels tend to have very low morale, very poor equipment, so defeating them is not particularly hard. So we should also probably consider how we're going to achieve conquering these last two territories. Now, one thing we could do is exactly what we did with Ossery and Leinster. Fake a claim on one of them and use that to create a de jure ducal claim on another territory. So if we have a look at Kildare here, we can see it as part of the Duchy of Meath. And uh, Meath also contains Dublin. So if I faked a claim on one of these two, I would then be able to take the other through a de jure claim after creating the title Duchy of Meath. However, you can see here the Duchy of Meath exists. It only consists of the county of Kildare at the moment, but it does exist. That doesn't stop me though, because what you can do is usurp titles. So if I go to the de jure here, you can see that rather than creating it, you can usurp it. Duchy of Meath, if I can get control of at least half of the de jure counties, I can usurp that claim through paying some gold. And that basically means that I'm not creating the title, but the title is transferred from its current holder to me. And that is a very, very useful thing. And remember, that can be done to you. And this is part of the reason why I was saying when you try and give landed titles to your vassals, try and include all the lower landed titles as well. Because if you start splitting them up, the vassals end up with de jure claims on each other and will fight each other and all that infighting weakens your realm. So beware the usurper. Any claimants here? Yeah. That's interesting with claimants as well. If you've got, uh, say, Ossery here, you can... Uh, check there's cl who has a claim and uh, whether or not we need to be worried. So one of my kinsmen here has a claim on it, there's a few people outside, so we wanted to make sure in theory none of these people are in a position of power to actually exert that claim. So the only one here that's actually got a border indicating that they are of landed rank is Earl Murkad of Dublin here, and uh, he's not going to be a problem as we discussed in previous videos. So. Um, we can also, if you wanted, you see, invite these people to court. You can do that through the diplomacy options. And uh, if you invite them to court, where is that option? Is it here somewhere? There must be something different with this one. Um, I don't think they always can accept an offer of invitation to court. I think that might be a. Uh, are we de jour, do you Leinster claimants? We just wanted the county of Ossery's claimants, didn't we? Okay, that's odd. Alright, oh, this one's already part of my court, is why. Uh, let's try... Marshal of Oriel. Let's see who this person is. Courtier in Oriel. Yeah, you see this guy is non-land... This guy is not landed. He is uh, not within my court already, so he can be invited to join the court. So what I could do is, say I didn't claim him, say I didn't uh, own Ossery, I could invite him to my court, press that claim on his behalf. Now that alone doesn't do me much good because he's from a completely different dynasty. However, what I could do is marry him matrilineally to somebody of my dynasty, so again, their children are of my dynasty, and that way, when he's put on the throne, well, when he's put on that particular seat of power, as it were, for that particular county, in this case Ossery, uh, he dies, the title passes into my dynasty, and from that dynasty it's then a lot easier to convince people to swear fealty and vassalization and so on. So, continuing the clock. Now, ideally, what I will do is forge a claim on Kildare or Dublin, because that's probably the quickest way to expand at the moment, but... I also need to get married because I have no heirs at the moment. So what I'm going to do is break this betrothal and then see if I can get the marriage. And I can. 
Ooh, political concerns. That's good. Political concerns usually means that the person has claims, titles, and so on. And you can see here, she does. She has a strong claim on the Duchy of Lothian, which is this particular area. If we uncheck de jour, you can see that is the entire Duchy of Lothian. So I could, in theory, again, um, now that when she's married to me, um, press that claim. She gets put into that seat of power. My children are her successors. So my children, once they arrive, not only get these titles from me, but they would also get that title from her. So that's why those political concerns were there, because this guy does not want his daughter married off to someone who can simply use her claim as a means to get a pretty big chunk of Scotland and the Northwest England. I'll take the money at the moment, I think. Um, yeah, it's not quite down to uh, Liverpool and Lancashire, but... Uh, ooh, Chester. What's that part du jour part of? Duchy of Lancaster. Hmm. Hold off of Brunswick as usurped title, County of Holston. So you see here, here we have an assert. So that's just notifying me that uh, someone somewhere has changed hands. Now, really, I don't want to reassign the Chancellor at the moment, but I think we've got problems here. Any state diplomacy? Ah, he's quite happy that I defeated rebels for him, so that's helped offset those problems, along with the feast as well. Laws. Not quite at the 10 year mark yet. Um, as for succession, um, I'm probably going to go with. Um, oh, is it primogeniture? No, it's not primogeniture, is it? Primogeniture is, yeah, oldest child of the rule inherits all titles. Yeah, primogeniture. I always get mixed up between seniority and primogeniture. Um, elective monarchy is essentially an election. Everyone who is one title below you, so in this case the dukes, gets to cast a vote, and they vote for who they want to be the next uh, ruler. It's a very, very useful one because it keeps all your vassals happy but you want to sort of engineer it so that all of the eligible voters and all of the people who are eligible to be voted for, i.e. the Dukes, are all of your dynasty. Um, also, if you hold too many elector titles, so if you hold too many duchies yourself, if you're the king, or if you hold too many um, county titles, or baronies as it were, then um, if you're a Duke, then people obviously get pissed off by that. Details, again, are here. It's best to just give it a bit of a read. Tanistry is similar, but um, the people who vote and the people who are eligible are, again, slightly different, but give it a read. I'm probably going to go with uh, primogeniture at the moment. It's, uh, it annoys vassals, but it guarantees that all your titles are kept together. Ooh, Ormond has... Uh, is this the same guy? Yes, it is. He's just come of age. So, let's see if I can arrange a marriage for him. No, no one useful yet. How's my relationship with my wife? Right, I don't like her, but she quite likes me. Um, apparently her personal diplomacy isn't too good, and it isn't. Oh well. Um, good relation between you and your wife and your wife and you will usually lead to more kids in this game, so... Uh, consider that. It can be useful to send gifts and so forth if you need to improve the relationship in one direction. Okay, I've decided that um, I'm going to get rid of this guy. Uh, oh, no, his uh, opinion of me has shifted again. His opinion of me has been bouncing up and down, so... Uh... Oh, we have a faction. Oh! What a surprise. The guy who I thought was going to be a problem has turned out to be a problem. Let's see if we can get rid of him. Okay, if we get a spymaster on side. It's three, four. Oh, we might be able to, actually. Send him a gift. No. Bugger. Very close, though. Very close. No one else. Okay, so now we've, we're in a quite an unpleasant position here because this guy has formed a faction. He has no members yet, but his military position is very strong. 
primarily because we just don't have the, um, the military still hasn't recovered from those wars I've been fighting yet. So how can we go about this? Well, there are a few options here. Build spy network, so that can improve the assassination chances here. Because I'm now considering this guy hostile. It is now open season on he and his. I could try and revoke his title here and now, um, but I would gain even more tyranny for doing so, because he's done nothing wrong. Forming factions is, in theory, the proper way to uh, achieve these sorts of changes within the game. And by the proper way, I, of course, mean the way that is not frowned upon, but, uh, rather than the way that you have to do it. So, imprisoning him will incur tyranny. And I don't think I can handle any more tyranny. It's a minus 40 now. So another set of tyranny penalties is just going to severely cripple this character's relations with his vassals. So the only other option really at the moment is to hope that the assassination works, which it's not going to with a power level this low. And there is no one really, apart from the spy master, who can um, really give me that extra boost. Marry this courtier off to him, might improve our relations slightly. Um, I could try excommunicating this guy, but no, he's like too much. I could just grant him his independence but then he passes out of my realm. But then he's not able to try and install this guy on the throne either. So what might be easier is to try and kill this guy, because he is essentially one of my pretenders. So let's cancel that plot. Because if he kills, he's not trying to put himself on the throne. The claimant is this guy. So um, Conquer for Munster is led by Earl Amliab here, but the actual person who it is trying to put on the throne is this guy. So if I kill this guy, they don't have anyone to put on the throne. So let's see if this is a bit easier. His intrigue is, our relative intrigues are quite large, but on the other hand, people like him, there's a lot more people, but none of them have particularly high plot power. Ah, bugger. Well, the other thing we might be able to do is call in allies, because now I'm allied with um, the King of Scotland. So, well, the Duke, well, the Duke of uh, Lothian, anyway. Is he at war with anyone? He's not at war with anyone, by the looks of it. So, County of Dunbar, County of Lothian. Attacking King Malcolm II of Scotland. All right, so he is involved in a war. That means it's unlikely that he'll come to my aid in a fight, but a fight may very well be coming up. So I dare not imprison him because even if he doesn't raise his flag in rebellion, the tyranny is just going to be too much of an issue. So all I can really do now is hope. So I'm going to switch my marshal over to train troops because at the very least that's going to um, give me a bit more of a boost. Train troops. So, and... Okay. I'll have my steward oversee construction in Thormond and build a wooden palisade here. It gives me a tiny bit extra levy, but right now I need every last soldier I can get. Um, I still don't have enough income to really get mercenaries, so unfortunately that's out of the question. And oh, this guy is going to be problematic. Okay, cancel that plot. Go back to the original because this had about a, this had a much better chance of succeeding. And we can only hope that perhaps uh, one of these idiots will uh, see reason and. Um, help me out. So he's accepted the offer to get married. Is there anything else we've got? I need... I could 
give one of my children to him to educate. That would improve his opinion of me quite a bit. I don't think I can give it to him directly. Yeah. Um, hang on, where are we? Mayor Akjan's opinion will be increased by 20. Yep, that's great. Tad McDiarmut's opinion. It's Tad McDiarmut. Oh, he's the guy who's currently educating him. Um, let's give him one of the other ones. Nope. No joy there. Alright, we'll give him the one who isn't my heir. So I'll take the uh, penalty from this Duke Brian the second there in the hopes that I can uh, I just need a little bit more to get this guy on side. Okay, he's accepted that. Come on, join the plot, join the plot. Yes! There we go. Okay, so he's going to add like 180 something to this plot, so that could very well tip the balance here. All we need to do is hold out. Okay, I've lost the trusting trait, which improves my um, intrigue by two, because I've lost that negative two modifier. So you can see that one's now gone up by 10% anyway, without even having someone in there. So the plot power is at 242%. And he's pushed for it. 74.8% of the liege. This is going to be one of those wars where there's going to be one or two battles and everyone's too shagged out to actually fight any further. Let's raise the levies. Because we are going to war. Okay, so we can call in allies. So, okay, I'm not going to call this guy in yet because if I can send a gift, I'll be able to push him to the point where he's actually going to like me. Um, so, I'm not going to push that just yet. Are there any others? There are no others. And there goes the first plot. So, let's march and hope. So if we can put this guy down, we can righteously imprison him, and that will be very helpful. Ah, bloody rebels. You see, this often happens when you have rebellions within your territory. The rebels get random events that just gives them an army. Okay, so I've killed the guy. Killed the guy far too late, but... Let's see who we're fighting now. We're fighting against his uh, brother. His heir is of a different dynasty. Which is this dynasty? House de Cashel. Ah, so he's the first of his name. Okay. Um, we could try offering peace here. He might not want to continue this war. Oh, he does. So even though he's inherited this war, and as you see, I'm now just below. That army was just enough to tip the scales. Flaming hell, I hate those random events. But still, that's the game. We've got to work with them. So I might as well merge these armies together. And I'll leave them here for now. In the hope... Well, no, if I leave them there, there's going to be other random events. But there might be random events in my favour that will lower the number of defenders in the siege. So, I'll leave them there for now and just hope that I can get some more military in. No, I still like the other one too much even after death. So, who's this heir here? Let's see if I can marry him. Well, I'm not going to marry him, but I keep forgetting I've got no female uh, people of my dynasty to go in matrilineal marriages. So that decision not to marry this character straight away is really biting down hard now. Um... As is needing to keep my bleeding levies up. But uh, we should be okay. Still not running for 10 years. So I'm choosing to leave this guy here because, well, there's random events that may deplete the attackers, there's also random events that deplete the defenders. This guy at 95 strength, 
that army ain't going to be causing problems. So, okay, so we can get some ten more troops in there. It's not going to be enough to tip the balance, but every little helps. Now, do I want to kill this guy? Yes, I think I do. At the very least, it'll keep the um, forces there wrong-footed. Spymaster still likes me, so I might as well use that. So... It's these sorts of little tricks that can help uh, destabilize a realm long enough for you to actually make a meaningful difference in these war efforts. Hopefully. Yes, excellent. So he's now cacked it. So now it's this guy. And you can see now I think we're murdering our way through the court. Um, I don't think he's got... Yeah, there's uh, no... There's no um, claims here, so the, the title is now passing through the court because we have literally just ripped the dynasty up. So, we're going to continue to do so. And unfortunately, this guy's quite high martial score as well, so could have probably just left the kid there. His intrigue isn't bad either, but... Uh, wait, is that spy ma Is that Spymaster? I think it is the spy master. No, there's the spy master. And unfortunately, he actually really likes this new guy. So that has come to an end. The killing has stopped. Well, the back alley killing anyway. Oh, I just wish I could raise at 91. It'd be more than enough to finish the job. Okay, my wife is pregnant. This is useful. This is very good. Ah, I've now been for 10 years. I need peace so I can change these bloody succession laws to something that doesn't suck. Oh, something's gone on here. Oh, at some point somewhere the number of defenders was decreased. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but uh, either way I'm going to be very grateful for it. I'll probably look over this video once we're done recording and see what happened there, because I have absolutely no smegging clue. <clears throat> Okay, so it's only a matter of time now before that one is uh, torn down, assuming I don't get really unlucky with the random events. Can't do any of the good stuff. Right, I'm going to switch over to fabricating claims as well, because I'm going to claim this place for my own before long. Uh, fabricate a claim on Kildare. Kildare will do nicely. Because that way I can get the... Uh, I should be able to grab the duchy quite easily as well. It would probably be wise to actually start investing a little bit more. Oh, bloody hell, that was quick. Okay, I now have that claim. Oh, <laughs> well done, Chancellor. I may actually bother to learn how to pronounce your name now. Either way, it's going to be a while before I can switch him over again, but the next stage of the plan is now in place. I just need to put down this rebellion, um, recover from these wars, and then I'm in a very good position to claim Kildare from Kildare, um, usurp the title of the Duchy of Meath, and using that title, create a Casus Belly for Dublin. And then once I've claimed Dublin, I should have enough territories to create the Kingdom of Ireland. So we now have a much clearer plan. And I have a son. So we're going to try and finish up this battle, change the succession laws, then bring this video to a close, and then on the next video hopefully I can go over just preparing for this last big push, and um, from then on we should be very close to the end of this uh, idea of calling this video it quits once I become the King of Ireland, and I'm sure a lot of you are going to uh, request that I carry this on, and we'll see, we'll see. There's other things I'd like to do, but uh, I've got to admit I have enjoyed these videos, and I have enjoyed... Uh, the fact that so many of you seem to enjoy them as well. So we'll see where that one goes. But for now, we're finishing up these sieges here. We can relocate. Okay, let's have a quick check of the opinions. Hmm. We'll start sowing dissent in Kildare, because that will weaken the relationship between the owner and his vassals, 
thus reducing the strength of his military, thus making the inevitable attack much easier. There's no point in trying to secure relations with Ormond because, frankly, um, I'm probably just going to nick it. Nearly there. Okay, fantastic. Pause the game, offer peace, enforce demands. Okay. Let's just disband these levies before they cause any more uh, unrest with my vassals. Right, so, now succession laws. No vassal has a negative opinion of you, that's another requirement. And guess which vassal does? That's right, the one I just kicked the shit out of. What a surprise, all the others love me. I think that tyranny must have worn off. No, it hasn't. Oh no, it's crushed a major revolt. People quite like it when you uh, prove how strong you are. It makes your claim seem a lot more legitimate. Okay, so I could try buttering this guy up. His heir doesn't like me either, possibly because of the amount of war I've been waging. Well, no, they've got no reason to like me, but they've got that tyranny thing to contend with. Now. Mm. Low almost opinion about my sense of man is 20. I could possibly swallow that. Especially as now there aren't any vassals who are going to be in a major position to really be a threat to me. There's going to be individual cities rebelling. They're going to have to form factions and those factions are going to have to have members. So I could actually possibly get away with this. On the other hand, I could banish him, which would leave pretty much exactly the same, which would kick him out, give me a shitload of money, um, but it would further cause problems with the tyranny. And therein lies the tyranny. I could execute the guy. Um, that would only give me a minus 10 penalty. I'd send him a gift. That would improve his opinion of me to be positive. And that would then let me change the um, succession laws, which is what I really want to do. And I can figure out what to do with this guy later. Because there's no point in me spending 20 gold to improve his opinion if I'm just going to kick him out anyway further down the line. And while that extra minus 20 may not seem like much, you've got to realise that um, well, actually part of my tyranny has previously worn off, so my tyranny is only at minus 20 for some of these people. In fact, it's vanished entirely for some. This is why it always pays to actually check out what makes these numbers instead of just looking at the numbers. So you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm sorry, sir, but um, you are henceforth banished from the realm of Ormond from the duchy of, um, what's my main duchy again? One second. From the duchy of Munster. And all your holdings now belong to me. Okay, now let's just hope that didn't, yep, here we go. So, succession laws. We don't want to really change this to agnatic because there's no real um, problems here. Um, I've only got male children anyway. So, agnatic cognatic is nice. Seniority, eldest, per, eldest member of the dynasty inherits all titles. This can be fun in the early game, but further on down the line, when all of your rulers have less than 10 years to live when they inherit the title, changing it is an absolute arse. You've basically got to kill two or three members of your own dynasty just so that the one who inherits the title is actually young enough to live long enough to change the damn thing back. And that's not even then getting into the problems of making sure that all your vassals have a positive opinion of you when you're going around knifing people. Um, nevertheless, it is a very, very good way to ensure that um, all of the titles currently held by your dynasty are consolidated. So it does have its uses, you've just got to be very careful how you play it. Elective monarchy. So you see the ruler and each lower rank vassal, i.e. the dukes if the ruler is a king, or the barons or counts, I believe it is, if the ruler is a duke, can nominate a successor from among themselves and the legitimate children and siblings of the ruler. Dukes are valid electors in both kingdoms and empires. So in the case of an emperor, it's not just the kings who get to vote. Elective succession is very popular with vassals, but they will not approve if their liege personally holds too many elector titles. I currently hold all of them, I think. Uh, all the ones that count, anyway. Uh, Tanistry. This is a unique one. You won't see this from everyone because Tanistry is a uniquely Gaelic thing. The ruler of... Uh, 
The ruler and all vassals at one or two ranks below can nominate an heir, the Tanist, from among the members of the ruler's dynasty. So essentially, it means that not only do the people below me get to vote, but the people below them get to vote as well. However, um, they can only vote for members of my dynasty. So there's no danger, like there is under elective monarchy, of a different dynasty getting elected to the position and thus my dynasty losing all those titles that we've worked so hard to achieve. Um, so vassals tend to favour older members from other branches of the family, especially claimants. So people who have claimants, like uh, uncles and nephews, tend to be favoured rather than the direct lines of succession. So that can cause various problems as well as the titles... Some titles tend to pass father to son, the main titles tend to pass um, through these succession laws. So I'm going to stick with my original idea, primogeniture. So. As you can see, I now no longer have to worry about my territory being split up, and my only child now ten now stands to inherit everything. So I don't need to worry. Uh, I think the only pretenders that he has are going to be these two, his siblings, and depending on how useful they are, I might let them come of age, have children, and then kill them. Because that means that the only pretenders then will be any other children that I have. Okay. So we've changed succession laws. I might want to change these feudal levies, actually. Nah, it's not really worth it just for um, a positive five modifier if I drop it to normal. I'll leave those as they are for now. So we've changed succession laws. We've had a quick look at succession laws and what they actually can entail. Um, my military is now very very potent but is not quite at full strength because obviously I've taken losses in fighting so many wars in quick succession. So I'm not going to go straight for Kildare. I'm not going to press that claim straight away. I'm going to wait a while and then um, press that claim. So hopefully my Chancellor can sow distrust as well. And in the meantime I'm going to send my spy master into Kildare as well to help try and weaken them politically before the big push. I've got a lot of uh, people who don't like me here. That's not very good. You know, these are the people who remember the tyranny and see why that's been built up so much. So uh, what might be worth doing is uh, holding some feasts because I don't believe that uh, yeah, many of these aren't actually direct vassals, they're courtiers. So they should still be influenced by the extra diplomacy boost I get from the feasts without necessarily needing to turn up to them. So that's the plan. Uh, consolidate, reinforce, um, possibly actually use some of this money that I've made to build some palisades and things. So I'll do that now actually. I'll uh, construct some castle donjons and things. Donjons are good because they give you quite a big boost to your levy size, so I'll build one there. And then I'll build a low stone wall in Ossery, or wooden palisade. So that money really should have been earmarked for the kingdom and creating the title Kingdom of Ireland because make, take, making that money is going to be hard. But right now, um, that's going to ensure that my military advantage is pushed as hard as it can be. And uh, thus, I remain strong and in a position to take Kildare and have to kill their Dublin. So for now however there's only one other thing to do which is to switch over my steward to I think collecting taxes. We need that money. Okay for now that's uh, that's it for this episode. I hope you're all enjoying them. Um, I'm not currently drunk so uh, that's an improvement over the last two episodes. Uh, as always I encourage you to leave your comments and um, like I say, I'm looking at possibly branching out into new things apart from this series, so if you've got any games that you'd like to maybe see me do a Let's Play of, or any ideas that you've got for shows that you'd like to see, or games that you'd like reviewed, anything like that, um, you know where the comments section is. I fully encourage you to use them, and uh, it's great to actually have a community and so many subscribers. So, until next time, I'm Yves T, signing off.